know the LA Chargers, you never fail to entertain me. So uh, just this week, uh, we had some pretty big news come out of the Chargers ownership group. Uh, the LA Times came out with an article stating that Dean Spanos' sister and co-trustee Dia Spanos, which like how confusingly similar are those names? Uh, yeah, thought, like, yeah, that was, that was really name. easy. That was you really took easy. a bunch of letters stuck in a jumbler. You took a bunch of letters, you stuck it in a jumbler, like whatever comes out, comes out. Like, you just used the same fi- like four letters. They like the, they like the name Dean so much, they wanted to name the other kid Dean, but it was a daughter, so they're like, okay, just take the N. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? How's it spelled? <laughs> D-E-A. I'm not Bro. even kidding. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, so here, let's, let's get back to the topic. Yeah. <laughs> so... But she filed a lawsuit uh, to the L.A. Superior Court to force the sale of the L.A. Charters organization. Yeah, so, I saw something about that, but I didn't read it. Yeah, and so um, I was definitely blown away when I heard this. But as if that wasn't crazy enough, one of the people that's most interested and most one, a very realistic buyer of the Charters is none other than Amazon's Jeff Bezos. And in extremely Chargers fashion... They decided to make a major announcement about the organization on freaking April Fool's Day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're a bunch of fucking fools. I'm sure <laughs> That's of all days of the year. You know what I mean? Dude, exactly. He's like, so that's not happening? Yeah. Like, so that's not happening. You might as well have just done it on Thanksgiving or something. Yeah. On, yeah. The, same day, on the same day, George Kittle posted a picture in a Jags jersey. So how serious would you think we would take you? Yeah, exactly. That's pretty, I remember. Yeah, that's pretty, right? Like, like, yeah. And so there's, a, so there's an interesting twist to this. And so this is why it's actually pretty real. Realistic and uh, so in the, the in the suit that was filed by Dia Spanos, there's a letter letter written by Dean Spanos, who's obviously the primary owner of the Chargers, stating this is direct quote from Dean: uh, "The Spanos family is cur- currently experiencing irreparable financial and reputational damage." Uh, duh, and, <laughs> and vowed to his three siblings that he would secure an investment by the end of the 2024 season. In an effort to find a new owner. He did this in 2019? This was Dean's words. Yeah, this is not, this is old stuff. This in late is, yeah. legal paperwork. Yeah, and so this is, uh, this. I mean, this is something that's been boiling for a while. So um, in layman's terms, uh, you know, they're, they're in quite a bit of debt. They're in $353 million in debt right now. <laughs> How? How? They just moved, bro. Well, that's they why. Just- Oh, that's why. Oh, so they're that's stupid. That's why we're getting to that. And so, uh, do you know how much it costs to relocate a franchise? Someone told me, but I don't know. It's six hundred and fifty million dollars to relocate. That's how much. That's how you could buy a shit. You could do a shit stadium for that. Literally, you could have re, re like redone Qualcomm. One hundred percent. That's re, fucking stupid. I mean, Ca- California, obviously, stadiums are expensive here, but realistically, you probably, you know, I think you could probably renovate Qualcomm for a billion dollars. Yeah. 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 You're a billionaire. Find some other venture capitalist. Go up to Silicon Valley. Find like one of those super super rich guys. Yeah. Qualcomm wasn't falling apart. It was just a shithole. Like it was you, kind of falling. Apart. Yeah, was, but like was, apparently it was so it was so shitty that it literally wasn't earthquake safe. Oh, are you serious? Yeah, it was so bad. Well, and yeah, so, I guess that's why they're tearing it down. Yeah, it, it was. Out. I mean, you know, who knows? Maybe that could just be a you know a scapegoat. But um, but yeah, and so it's uh, it's really important in order to understand how this potential for sale is even happening. We have to make one thing clear, and that Dean Spanos's priorities are his pockets. Absolutely, facts, hundred percent. It's always been his priority. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like. Like, Not yeah, dumb. Like, yeah, yeah, of course. He's literally never done anything. It's been like, oh, I really care about my team. Like, if you did, you'd fucking win. Well, I mean, he inherited the team from Alex Bonus, who's honestly a pretty solid owner. He did. You know, yeah, he, he did. Didn't, yeah, exactly. You know, he he went to a Super Bowl, but never won one. But like, you know, he's definitely been more successful than his son has been. Absolutely, so, by a lot. Yeah, and uh, it's important to un- also understand that because of Spanos's cheap habits on pretty much fucking everything. Uh, this is what's gotten the Chargers into the situation. Uh, and so, you know, let's look at why the Chargers are even in L.A. The above all reason that they're there is because they're playing in that concrete toilet bowl. Yeah, yeah literally known as, Yeah, known yeah, as Qualcomm Stadium. The traffic getting in and out of there is probably the, nice. some of the worst I've ever experienced. Oh, yeah, I've been there. Yeah. It's a nightmare. Um, and, you know, they needed a new one. That's the fact of it. The yeah, matter. they did, for fact. Mm-hmm. Like, I've been there. It's awful. I yeah. agree. Would you, would you say that it was worse than the original Lions Stadium? If it's no. even in the conversation, yeah. though, that's saying I mean, a lot. The line, original line statement was in Detroit. So. Yeah, that was really bad. So, no. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, no. <laughs> the fact that's in the conversation of it isn't good, though. Yeah, it's... like, if anything was built in Detroit before, like, the last 10 years, it's probably not even there anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, it either burned down or someone claimed it as theirs and the city tore it down. It's wonderful people there, though. Yeah, okay. a lot of squatters. And uh, if, if Spanos was, like, literally any other owner in pretty much any professional sport, he would have just 
figured out a way to, to build the stadium. But you know, it seems like the better option to Dean Spanos. Instead of paying for a new stadium in San Diego, why not pay the amount for a stadium and just move to a new city? And then share a fucking stadium? Yeah, and they've only they've paid they've contributed, I want to say less than 10% than what the Rams have contributed for the stadium. And so it's it's a joke. They're literally squatting in on this stadium. Wait, less than 10%? Yeah, it's a joke. How are they what why wouldn't the Rams just be like, fuck you? So do you know what PSLs are? No. So PSLs are preferred seat licenses. Okay, I think I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, and so PSLs, in order for uh, both teams to play there, they had to sell $400 million in PSLs. And the Rams did it, you know. Like right that. away. Yeah. And the Chargers, still this day, I want to say are maybe 150, 200. Oh, my God, bro. Which is dude, really, I was really I was talking to someone the other day at work, and they were like, "Dude, we should just buy like season tickets to the charge." Like, nah, I'm not trying to buy that. It's like way too much money. They're like, no, it's like really not. It isn't expensive. Like, <laughs> they're like, it's not expensive. Like, I'm gonna have to revisit that later. Yeah, <laughs> it's like because it's like, oh, if they're cheap, like then I'm definitely good. Because you know what I mean, like. Why would they be the same price? No one's going to come watch them. They would much rather come watch the Rams. I'd so much rather pay $15 for a beer and go go watch the Chargers lose in person. Yeah, 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 yeah. Facts. Like, exactly. Like, and you're a Chargers fan. So, like, like the Chargers thing is, like, just cheaper. Like, it's just the quality of the game suck. <laughs> like, the quality. 100%. Yeah, you're literally paying for quality of game. Uh, okay, so uh, back to Spanos being cheap. And uh, so... Because cheap the cheap owners typically does not yield a successful team. Never. Uh, the salary cap, the Mike only Brown. thing, yeah, literally the the salary cap. The only thing that that covers is the player's salary. Literally. And I think a lot of people, because there's a salary cap, I think they think that there's a salary cap for coaches, and that's just not true. No, the coaches they can get paid as much money as they want. It all just comes down to how much the owner is willing to shell out. Okay. And so I'm gonna look at. Uh, we're gonna take a look at some of the best coaches in the NFL. And I want you to tell me what they have in common. Okay. Bill Belichick, $12 million a year. Okay. Pete Carroll, $11 million a year. Okay. Sean Payton, $9 million a year. Okay. Andy Reid, $7.5 million a year. 7 dollars for Andy Reid? Yeah, that's that's a that's a bargain. It's honestly a steal, right? That's now. that's a huge bargain. But what do those coaches all have in common, Justin? Super Bowls. They all have Super Bowls. And so uh, the Chargers are one of the few organizations in the NFL that actually do not disclose their yeah, uh, coaches' a, salaries. It's a minimum wage job. Ex- exactly. And He's so, like, we'll give you $12 an hour. He's like, I'm making more as a DC. And they're like, yeah, we don't care. Yeah, yeah you're on unemployment, Anthony. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. Bro, like, that's why like, Anthony Lynn got Hope fired. Hope you got those stimmies, Anthony Lynn. Dude, Anthony Lynn got fired and got a raise. Like, yeah. you know, like literally, bro. Like, dude... Spanos is just such a fucking jackass, dude, because it's like you clearly haven't done the things like you have never just been intense on the team. You know what I mean? But what I mean by that is like literally throwing yourself into the team. Like, don't get me wrong. Jerry Jones has made a lot of mistakes, but you've never been like Jerry Jones just like is cutting corners. No, he's not. He's making bad decisions. Like with Robert Kraft, you never like, oh, he's about to say that. Yeah. Robert Kraft is super involved. Like any team that's pretty good is either a the guy is like, do whatever you want. And here's my pocketbook or B. We're going to be involved and we're going to help you make the decisions because there's the A owner, which are like the Saints owners and stuff like that, where they're like, they just write it, like they just write a check. And then you got the Stan Kroenke's of the world. Who don't write a check. And well, Stan Kroenke is literally, he just cares about money. That's, that's it. Well, yeah, he's yeah. a garbage human, but yeah. yeah, that's a whole thing. But, uh. Okay. So that's, uh, so that's leading me to, uh, my next thing. So like I was saying, they, uh, they don't disclose the salaries of their coaches. And so, it, you know, Anthony Lynn, coaches like him. Great guy. You know, he, he did a really cool thing where he went to Africa and he helped out with a bunch of cities. Super and, good uh, dude. You know, d- really awesome guy. And so I'm not trying to, when I bash him, I'm not trying to bash his character, but he sucks at coaching. Yeah, he's and bad. So, he's like, a bad head coach, for and sure. And so I, if they're not disclosing how much they pay Anthony Lynn, that doesn't tell me, look how much we're paying Anthony Lynn, guys. Yeah, right? Yeah, it means that they're trying to, you know, sweep that right Yeah, it's like, right, like. And, uh, yeah, no, it's, I, I just found that to be interesting. There's one in here that's going to shock you, though. Yeah, what? How much do you think Sean McVay is getting paid? Dude, like $9 million. Two. Why? He's getting paid $2 million. Well, he's because he's, like, 19 years old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty fucking accurate. Yeah, yeah, he literally is, like... Bro, if you're 19 years old and you're, like, $2 million, you're like, I don't need to work for the rest of my life. Yeah. Yeah, dude, like, literally, never again. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, that's... He, he might be, like, 20 or something. <laughs> he's, yeah. like... You card him. <laughs> like it. Bro, Mark Davis doesn't even have money. And he's like $10 million to John Gruden. Let's do it. Well, dude, even then, John Gruden has a Super Bowl. Yes. He does have a Super Bowl. Let's, like, it still, like, it still 
the same question. He's they all those guys that make that much money. Like, don't get me wrong, John Gruden's what, not a good coach. What What if John Gruden didn't inherit a fantastic Tony Dungy team? Yeah, I agree with that. Like, yeah. don't get me wrong, bro. It's Warren Sapp. Yeah, Monday Barber, Derek Brooks. Yeah, yeah, John Lynch. Yeah, Derek. That dude. That team. Like half. Like most of that. That team is stacked. That defense is in the Hall of Fame. They so kicked the shit out of the Raiders. Actually. Oh yeah, like fuck them the up. They kicked the shit out of the Raiders. Yeah, so mind annoying. you, yeah, he he did win a Super Bowl, and like they, I'm not trying to take away from that, but he is, you know, it's like no, yeah, no. There's definitely a clear difference. Don't get me wrong. Like I, yeah, yeah, uh, for sure. And uh, so um, going back to the Chargers, uh, they the they released a statement. Dean, Michael, and Alexis. So these are the three people that you know are trying to keep the charters in their family but in their very first sentence it just shows where their priorities lie our parents alex and faye wanted the charters organization to be in the family for generations to come who cares no one cares no one cares what your fucking family wants. that's the first thing you say bro what a jackass like who the fuck gives no a fuck no one cares i don't care i don't, don't care about care. your dead parents i don't care i literally pay money to go to these games the game should be good Exactly. I buy gear. The gear should be good. The team should be good. Do you really think it's a coincidence that the Chargers lead the league in injuries almost every year? You know how you know crazy. Yeah, like literally no training staff. But like you know what's crazy is that that is literally just saying like my feelings are hurt. Like that's what he's saying is like my yeah, mommy and my dude. daddy wanted me to have this team, so it's mine. Bro, like so accurate. you're such a pussy, bro. You are such a fucking pussy. Sell the team. Sell the team. Facts. So. Bezos should buy it. Absolutely. And so now let's get to Jeff Bezos because this is where it gets really you make interesting. The, team the best team. How, uh, okay, as a Chargers fan, I would love it so much if the Chargers could pull a Clippers and get one of the wealthiest people in the world to buy their team and turn them into an actual competitor. Yeah. The Clippers, I mean, they, they lost after leading 3 1 to the Nuggets, which was hilarious. Um, which I absolutely love, but the fact of the matter, the Clippers, the Clippers are going to win a championship next few years. Probably, yeah, probably, yeah, probably. Yeah, they're, they're they're a good team, and so I would love to see, I would love to see, you know, Jeff Bezos' pockets come in. Yeah, we'd have the best facilities in the NFL, the yeah. best training staff. He just buys Tom Brady's training program. He's like, we're all doing TB12 now. <laughs> He's like, we're all drinking alkaline four gallons a day. I swear to God, like if we you don't use only bands, we're gonna fight. He's like our coach. We're gonna reincarnate John, Don Shula. Yeah, he's like, he's like, it's just a hologram on the sideline. It's like, holy shit, we're winning every game. Just Bezos floating in the middle of the field, just watching over on like a floating disc. He's like, yes, yes. <laughs> That's such a Bezos fucking move. He would absolutely have like a crane that comes out, and he like comes out like the fucking Palpatine. And he just like looks at the whole stadium. Like, is this why you came? It's like. For the game, but yeah, like, thanks, Bezos. Dude, he would do it just to be, like, emperor of a team. You know I, I, mean? I think that's why. I think he just wants to do it they, just because he can. No, they would be like, oh, are you the owner? He's like, no, I'm the emperor. And they'd be like, excuse me. <laughs> and he'd be I'm like, the, emperor, yeah. I'm emperor of the Chargers. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm the Duke of the Chargers. Whoa, yeah. You know? like, it's like, jeez, dude, like, where's your mindset at right now? He's like, yeah, I'm just like God. And you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, you should own the team. Like, you'll probably make this amazing. He probably, he probably would. Yeah, he's a lunatic, but yeah. yeah. he's a lunatic. I mean, L.A., even though it is a very crowded sports market, if you can make it work in L.A. Yeah, but that's my whole thing with the... Tr- that That's my whole thing. It's like, obviously, I think if Bezos gets in there, I think I have the, I have trust in Bezos that Bezos would make it happen, but I have no trust that Spanos would literally... is going to make L.A. Chargers a thing. It's just not going to happen. The that's L.A. Right. Rams were in there a year before, and mm-hmm. they are clearly... They already were from there, mm-hmm. and they had already a falling. So when they came back... And they're better. We were living here. You know what I mean? We were all living here. We remember, like, everyone became a Rams fan immediately, bro. Like, I I get why no one follows the Chargers. Bro, yeah. Like, 100%. Like, and then they got the Rams. I'm like, wait, people are fans of football down here? I didn't realize that. It's like, yeah, we just don't like the Chargers because they fucking do nothing, bro. So true. They do nothing. So, like, in what world did you think you were going to get them to be good in L.A.? So, you know, I, I'll, we'll, we'll close out on this. Um, I will say the Spanos family, if they do make the right decision, which is to sell the team, they, they're going to be laughing all the way to the bank. Oh, yeah. Uh, Alex Spanos purchased the team for $72 million in 1984. Take a wild guess of what it's valued at today. It's more than a billion dollars. $2.6 billion. You fucking... $2.6 billion. So make no, make no mistake. Moving the charters to L.A. in this whole financial disaster was extremely avoidable. They just have an absolute joke of an owner. Absolutely. Dean, um, yeah, Dean Spanos, sell the team. Which kind of brings me to like the joke of... Uh, well, I wouldn't call him a joke. I'll call him... Out of touch. Uh, John Lynch. John. Jimmy G isn't worth a first rounder. We all know that. Like, we've seen the quarterbacks go around. Like, right now, so here, I'll kind of give you, like, a quick timeline of how this has gone. So, it w- it went from, hey, God, hey, hey, John and Kyle Shanahan, d- who do you plan on being your quarterback next year? They're like, well, how is that even a question? Jimmy. You know, 
Lord Emperor Jimmy Garoppolo. This was a few, mo- few months ago. A few months right? ago. Yeah, this is a few months ago. Lord Emperor ago. Jimmy Garoppolo, the best quarterback that's ever lived, of course. And they're like, yeah, okay. And so, and then it comes to like, yeah, like we're looking at other options. Like Jimmy's still our guy. And then it becomes, we just traded two first round picks to move up nine spots to the third pick. But Jimmy's still our guy. But Jimmy's still our guy. You don't guy. know who we're going to take. And we're like, yeah, I guess officially we don't know. And so like, that's, I guess you're right on that. But it was like, like, you move up to nine picks, you give up two first rounders, we know what you're getting. Like, we're, let's be super upfront with that. Like, it's a it's a quarterback. Like, you're not doing that for a corner. You're not doing that for a defensive end. You're not doing that for, like, a linebacker. You're not doing it for a tackle. You're not doing it for any other position under, other than a person that you think is going to take you back to the Super Bowl because if you're already in this position as the Niners with a good team, a good team around everyone but Jimmy, you can wait to sign the right guy. And there's and there's an important principle to note in sales that I feel like can be applied here. Know thyself. Yeah. I get that you want to get as much as you possibly can from a player, but know yourself. Jimmy G's not worth a first round pick. Well, it's unrealistic. He's through and through. Exactly. He's not worth a fourth round pick. Not at all. He's ter- I I would cut him. That was probably <laughs> what I would do. <laughs> Like he's a lot of money. Yeah, he's a lot of well, money. Dude, that's a, that's a problem. Is dead cap. He has a dead kit. So uh, like, do you know how much? Uh, I'd have to check. But it's not it's not crazy. But it's like doable where you could trade him and like you still have a dead cap hit. But like, I mean, you're gonna have a cap hit if he's on your team too. So like, you know, that's the whole thing. It's like, well, it's a dead cap hit. It goes, well, is he gonna play? It goes, no. It goes, well, then who gives a fuck? Like you, you regardless, he's taking up cap. You know what I mean? Um, so I, if, I mean, if I'm the Niners, I, like this, this all comes down Trace, to if Jimmy. Trade well, like fourth rounder. Well, well, well I mean, if, no, if, I, if I were them, you, this comes down to Jimmy G actually just you know setting his ego aside and just being like, hey, you're going to be the backup. We want you to mentor whoever we draft. Yeah, my whole thing is I wouldn't pay someone thirty million dollars to mentor a quarterback. That's true. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> it's a good point. Like, this you're going to pay thirty million, and anyone says the word mentor, fire them. I wouldn't, I would, yeah, <laughs> like, I wouldn't exactly call this a, a Fitzpatrick. Well, situation. he could really teach. Yeah, no, I don't give a fuck about teaching. He's taking up how much money? Yeah, he should give that back. It's theft. Like absolutely, that's like straight theft. Like don't worry. Like I mean, if it were me, get your money. You know what I mean? Like facts, mm-hmm. like hundred percent. But like it was super clear that when they were like looking at this, like they knew, they knew as the quarterback started to do pro days, as they started film started to come out, as they started to see like more and more of like what this quarterback class had to offer. Because you know you have the top three guys. You have Lawrence. Number one overall, clearly. Like, like, even Urban Meyer goes, yeah, I think we're going that direction. Like, he said that. No one has ever admitted to their pick before the draft. Ever. Not once. It literally never happened. Like, you know what they have done? Is they've agreed to contracts before the draft. But no one has ever come out and been like, yeah, probably that guy. That's a little shady. That's a little shady. Yeah, yeah like, I mean, like, yeah, like, well, like, well, Matt Stafford had already signed a uh, contract with the Lions before he ever got drafted. I didn't know that. Yeah, facts. He signed a hundred thirty million dollar contract before he ever got drafted, so that was super important because, like, when that happened, that was like it was really big news because they're like, "Wait, you can?" They're like, "Well, yeah," because if you know you're going to take him, who gives a fuck? And so, but no one, even the Lions, didn't say, "Hey, we're taking Matt Stafford." They didn't say that, even though they already be doing the contract. They were like, "No, you know, things happen." It's like, okay, but yeah, oh yeah, we're just going to throw eighty million dollars down the bank, down the drain. Like, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Dude, it, it's crazy that, you know, Matt Stafford's actually really even been able to make it this yeah. long in the league. Yeah, but, but it kind of brings it back to, like, Urban Meyer's like, yeah, probably that guy. But then you got Zach Wilson, you got Justin Fields. So unless one of those three guys, unless you're confident about all three of those guys, which you're confident about Lawrence, but you've got to be confident about the other three because they have the third pick, not the second. They have the third pick, and the Jets have the second. The Jets need a quarterback. I mean, same darn whatever. Like, say whatever you want. Like, in my opinion, the play, well, he has potential. If we're going off based off, like, reality and what has happened so far he's not the guy do, do you really think that was smart to trade up nine picks so you can get the third pick at quarterback unless you know who you you're getting and like you're very confident in that person so what if they've already talked to the jets and they've been like who are you taking and i think they, dude i could kind of see they the go niners getting mac jones i could see them getting mac no, jones that's, dude. A, that's a nightmare um but what if they just go like what if they call the jets what if you call the jets go look we're thinking about trading up. we want to trade up to three and we want to trade up to two and the jets are like we're not trading we know who we want. We're not trading. And they go, well, how about this? Will you tell us who we're taking if we trade up to three because we know who we want? And then the Jets go, yeah, because it's not going to affect us. We're in front of you. Yeah. And so what if the Jets tell the Niners, this is who we're taking? The Niners go, good. We wanted the other guy anyway. We're cool with that. And then, so there's no way you make that trade unless you know who you're going to get and you're confident. In it. And I just, I definitely don't think that's Mac Jones. I think it's Justin Fields. Absolutely. I think, I think Kyle Shanahan's like, Dude, 
what I've done with Matt Ryan, what I've done with Kyle, with, with fucking Jimmy G, what I've done with all these slow ass quarterbacks. Let me see what I can do with a mobile guy like Justin Fields. Like what if, what if, what if this is just the most insane, because Kyle Shannon is an incredibly gifted offensive mind. Like, yeah. And, and, and mobile is kind of an under, uh, understatement. Understatement. You ran a four, four, one. Was it a four four one? Four four one. Wow, that's that's at incredible. six three two twenty five. Good, good for him. You f- good for him? He's a that's, fucking that's, yeah. Like, he's that's fucking, a beast. Yeah, dude, he's literally a great guy. That's like, almost that's almost about? Lamar Jackson speed. Dude, it, like, that's in the conversation. Of well, that. that's close to it's close to Michael Vick. And like, here's the thing: it's like not one of the quarterbacks that ran those speeds looked anything like Justin Fields. Lamar, do you, do you Michael, think, jo- do Michael you Vick, think that like, Justin Fields can be the first? really good Ohio State quarterback. I don't know about that. That's a whole other like, thing. Like That's why I'm kind of trying to like separate them from the schools because I'm like, okay, just like their individual talents. You know what I mean? Because like, mm-hmm. if we're really going to do that, then why is Trey Lance? Are we even talking about Trey Lance? You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, why are we even talking you, about You him? know, this actually, this actually could be something that, you know, could work out in Zach Wilson's favor a little bit because even though he, you know, played at BYU, they have good athletes. They don't have Ohio State athletes. No, they exactly. They don't have Bama athletes. Exactly. And so he's probably had to fit it into tighter windows. Than exactly. They have. That's what people say about that. Yeah. So like, it's always like a, such a hit and miss with that, where it's like, yeah, you have to take that into account, but it's also like, like, yeah, but like, just because he's at a good school, how good? Like, that's probably because he's super good in high school. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, you don't get to a good school without being super good. Of course. Yeah, like you don't go to Bama and you're just you're a two star recruit. It doesn't happen. But guys that go to Bama start getting recruited when they're like twelve years old. Dude, they're literally born and Saban's right there, bro. Like he's 100%. just like yeah, he's like you can sign this birth certificate and this letter of intent. Yeah, like, kid's, like, kid's been born for a half hour. Yeah, he's like, yeah, he's gonna run a four. Yeah, he's he's gonna be my left tackle. Yeah, it's like, bro, he's years. like, how old's that? How much that weight weigh? They're like eleven pounds. He's like, I'll Perfect. take that. Yep, that's mine. That's <laughs> take mine. that. No, and like that's my whole thing. It's like unless you absolutely know who you're gonna get with Jimmy G, with everyone else, like all that stuff. Like you're just like you're not gonna make that trade, give up that much because they they've been conservative. So they've always they've been conservative. So unless they know exactly that guy, do you know what their cap space situation is? Like? I don't think it's too bad right now because I definitely know a bunch of contracts fell off the board. Um, but uh, like I know they just signed that Trent Williams deal, which is huge and kicks in like ex- immediately. You know what I mean? Because uh, he was a free agent. But yeah, they're in a they're in a solid cap space. Yeah, they're, they're not. They're, bad. they're they're eighteen under right now. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. like yeah, like they're they're chilling. You know what I mean? So. I think they go up, they get Justin Fields, and that's their guy. And I think Jimmy G's gone during that draft. I uh-huh. think he, I think he gets traded during that draft. Absolutely. Like I don't see, I could see. And that's another thirty mil right there. Well, if they, well, if he gets traded though, because they have to eat that, they have to eat that dead cap. I forgot about that. Yeah. So, well, the quarterbacks coming out, the cap hits are only like ten to twelve, I think. So, which isn't as bad. That's it's not great. That's not bad, but, but that's not nearly as bad as a Carson Wentz situation. Oh yeah, bro. Well, the cap hits for these for these quarterbacks coming out like eight to twelve million, so they'll have plenty of space to sign their rookie mm-hmm. team. But it's going to be interesting watching this team though, because this Niners team outside of their quarterback is stacked. Absolutely, it's freaking stacked. stacked. And like you got Debo, you got all these guys. So like, why are you going to sit here, lie to my? freaking face and be like jimmy's fine jimmy's good it's we i watch football bro we're, we're not i watch the game we're i have a home. tv i have internet i watch it i see him throw the football and it's clear it's it's like bro looking at a color you're like that's blue and you're like it's clearly red like it's clearly red. they're like not blue and you're like am i a fucking psycho am i crazy am i the only one that thinks this and then i talk to my friend who's a Niners fan he's like no nope, i totally understand and kyle shanahan and john lynch are living in a fairy world and i'm like yes clearly 100 percent yeah it's gonna be really interesting to watch them this year if they get a good quarterback which i mean if they moved up to the third pick they're gonna probably you, draft you, a quarterback. yeah you you well here's my thing is like i don't think with the kyle shanahan john lynch situation like the the, the room like i don't think unless they're 100 percent positive this guy's gonna be nails that they're taking i don't think they're those kind of people i don't think they're like this might be our shot i think they're very calculated people like because they they have been like They've released players that are like, what? And it's like, oh, okay, that makes sense. And it's like, they've done a lot of things that make sense. You know what I mean? Like, not trading a ton of tra- capital. Like, when DeForest Buckner came up for a, a contract extension, everyone's like, you're not going to pay him? They traded him for a first rounder, and they took Javon Kinlaw, who's pretty solid. And it's like, that's actually pretty fucking smart, because you don't have to pay this guy, and you get a guy coming in who's really young that... You know, you can pay in a couple of years and you have to pay right now. Kinlaw was great too. Yeah, Kinlaw was really good. Like, mm-hmm. he was solid and he's a monster, bro. He's an absolute freak. So, I think, like, 
My whole pro- my my issue though is with the fact that you think Jimmy G is worth anything more than a fourth rounder. Like he's absolutely like. A well, f- I think we have two issues. It's that yeah yeah. It's, there's that and the fact that they're just bullshitting everyone. You're a like, liar. You're a liar. You lie to my face. Like it's disrespectful. Which and honestly, not, I mean, I like I, I, I don't I don't I don't feel bad necessarily for Jimmy G, but <laughs> I mean, that but that is kind of shitty. I mean, though. I get it. Like That's if I'm John Lynch, shitty. I'm like, yeah, he's my guy, and they're like, you sure? And you're like, yeah, dude. Shut up. Like. He's, it's like, Bro, remember, sh- remember Sean McVay when he was talking about Jared yeah, Goff? It's like, it's like, yeah. Is Jared Goff going to be your starting quarterback? His answer is, he's our quarterback. Yeah, it's like, you know what? How about this? How about I take every hidden conversation I've had with my GM and I just put it right here? Right on t- That's what you want? They're like, yeah, that's what I want. They're like, yeah, I'm not going to do that. So he's our quarterback. <laughs> it's like, Bro, we know you're lying. But, it, you know, you're, you're stuck between this hard place. You're like, I get that you can't just say that. But also, we know. So, all right. So I, I have one final question for you. So... <laughs> Who do you think they're going to pick, and do you think that that person's going to help the Niners? Oh, I think they're going to take Justin Fields. I think Zach Wilson goes two. I think Trevor Lawrence goes one. That's my thing. If I think if they got Zach Wilson, it's a total game changer. I'm like, yeah, that would be great. Okay. I, I just don't know about Justin Fields with that. Like, a lot of I – think, I, think, I think they will. I think they will. I think Justin Fields, like, I've heard, like, a lot of his stuff. He's like, I get it. Like, you know, there's certain things he's like, but, like – I know where I'm at as a person, his mindset. Like, the way he talks, you're like, dude, you just have, like, a growth mindset. You clearly are going to work as hard as you have to in order to get to where you need to be. Absolutely. So if you're willing to do that, then we're, like, anyone that has that kind of mindset, it's really hard to bet against them. You know what I mean? Like, especially, like, when you're talking about, like, just people that are like, hey, I'm an athlete. I have athleticism. Like that Tom Brady-style mindset. Yeah, just mindset. Like, no one has that. But, like... Just a dog. Yeah. Well, I guess Michael had it. But Michael Jordan had it. But, like, it's, like, just... You you don't say. Yeah, exactly, right? Yeah. But, like, that... He was okay. Yeah, right? Uh, But, like, just having that mindset of, like, hey, we always have to work hard. We always have, like, no days off. Like, Dame Lillard. You know, all that stuff. That is what it takes. Like, and those guys, those guys, like, when you're like, oh, like, it's just a bust. No, that guy's straight up, like, maybe with quarterbacks, but those guys just straight up mm-hmm. didn't work hard. So, do you think Justin Fields will help him now? Yeah. You yeah. So? Uh, do you think, because that's, no. that's, you Honestly, know. Honestly, like, the first four games, I think it'll be really rough. And then I think it'll start to level out and it'll be solid at the end. But I don't think, I think it'll be like a Jalen Hurts situation where it's like, okay, yeah, he's got some potential, but make some rookie mistakes where you're like, okay. We'll see how year two goes. I think that's how it's going to be. Year one's going to be rough, and I think year two will be good. Yeah, th- this year was definitely since, you know, we had two re- really good rookie quarterbacks in, uh, in Justin Herbert and Joe Burrow. I think that we kind of have developed these very high standards for rookie quarterbacks. Where, yeah. You know, where, you know, the way that these guys are probably going to play next year is how rookie quarterbacks play. it's just play. like us poking them with a the stick. It's like, throw 30 TDs. <laughs> Come on, dude. Yeah, figure it out. What do you stupid. like? What do you like, 20? Come on, stop being a pussy. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> like, yeah. like I moved out of my mom's house. I have social yeah. anxiety. It's like, I don't care. Can't, Win! Can't, can't <laughs> Bro, legally isn't that wild to you that we're literally screaming at 23-year-old... Like, they're kids, dude. They're kids. Like, when you're 23, you're a kid. I'm screaming, fuck you, at the TV. I'm a psycho, bro. Like, how in what world are you, like, thinking that... We couldn't tell. No, yeah. Like, tell. I'm like, fuck you. Fuck you. Catch it. Uh, like, literally, DeAndre Schmidt dropped the ball. My girlfriend goes, how old is he? I go, what? And she goes, how old is he? And I go... I don't know, like 21. She goes, yeah. And then she like walked away. I was like, oh, I'm an asshole. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, um, that's it. Yeah, I'm done.